Hi everyone. What I have in front of me here is two Microtik routers. This one is a router only, it doesn't have any Wi-Fi. Wi this is a 750GL. It's a five port router. This one here is a HAP light. It's a four port router, but it has two gigahertz wireless. You can see they're in the same form factor. Now this this device is no longer sold. It's it's um, been up, upgraded, uh, updated. But there are many more Microtik routers that you can purchase. I had an incident uh, just recently gave me the idea for this video and the power supply for that router failed. And searching around at the shops, I was not able to find one. But then what I realized was that one of the great things about these Microtik routers is that the power requirements are incredibly broad. Even though this is a 24 volt power supply, you can power this device from 8, from eight volts to, through to 30 volts. Very, very handy. So what I ended up doing was um, cutting off the end of the power cord, as you can see there. So then I put a couple of terminals on the barrel plug. I obviously had to work out which one was positive and negative because you don't want to reverse those. And then I took my cordless drill battery, which is um, 18 volts, and just simply plug that in. And with the two terminals, um, a bit difficult to read, that's the plus there. And that's the minus there. And then you can see the, the router is powering up. The, the router I did this to, 2 gigahertz Wi-Fi, this battery lasted about 12 hours. Lovely piece of engineering. On this side, on this one here, the HAP light, you can see that it's not a barrel plug, but it's in fact a USB mini adapter. So this, this router runs off a phone charger. Other than the phone charger, you can actually do something like this. using a normal power plug, uh, power, USB power device. This is a thousand milliamp hour device. It'll run this for over a day. Uh, you could run this in a car. You can get versions of these with USB ports. But you can see that this, these, don't, these particular routers don't support USB ports, but you can get ones that do, um, and they will allow you to plug in a 4G USB dongle or something like that. These are just a sample of two of, of two devices, but there are Microtik devices out there that will cover every requirement that you have. Now there are no other routers, to my knowledge, that have this capability. Um, this is obviously a small router. You, you know, can, it's a it's a home router. But even Microtik's bigger stuff, <clears throat> a large percentage of the hardware has a very broad voltage requirement. So with your Netgears or any of those types of routers, you have to have the exact power adapter with the exact voltage and the exact amperage. But with the Microtik routers, th this is not the case. So you can do things like what we've done here. I, I've been using these devices for about 10 years now. The reason why I switched to them or what, the reason why I looked for something else was I, was, I had a lot of problems with friends, family um, and people with small businesses that were constantly having to reboot their, their Netgear routers because they'd failed for some reason or another and a, and a simple reboot would solve the problem and that was on a weekly or fortnightly basis I'm sure people watching this video are nodding their heads in agreement and these things if you let them will stay up for over a year without being rebooted from a security perspective that's not very good because obviously you need to apply your security patches but rest assured that you are not going to have to reboot these routers every week or every fortnight they have what's called a watchdog which allows you to ping a site like google for example 8.8.8.8 .8 and when it can no longer make contact with that ip address when that ping stops the router will automatically reboot if the isp has an outage or if for some reason a network cable gets disconnected and then plugged back in, these types of things, you're able to, the router will compensate for you and just do an automatic, automatic reboot and you'll be back online. And it will keep rebooting every five minutes until it starts to, to it sees that ping again. The third reason 
that I really like these routers is that they are incredibly robust, but they're also well supported by the manufacturer. I have routers that are 10 years old that are still getting updates provided by the manufacturer. Hardware still fine, still powers on, everything works fine, and I'm getting the very latest 2021, as of this video, December 2021, updates for that router. Related to that, Microtik have just released Router OS, which is the name of their operating system. So 7.1 is a major leap forward. It's got a new Linux kernel and a lot of really interesting updates, such as WireGuard support and a brand new user manager for Radius. Lots of lots of great improvements. Microtik certainly don't get the credit they deserve for supporting these devices. And if you're someone who is keen on um, saving the world through recycling and so forth, then you should move to Microtik devices because you know that they're going to be supported. The only way you'll ever have to upgrade or change a Microtik device if, if, is if it's no longer doing the job that you need it due to traffic increases, architectural design changes, or it fails. Now, speaking of failure, in 10 years, I've only had one device that I thought had failed. It turns out, after a bit of trial and error, I was able to get it going again. You can also manage these devices through CLI. They, they, you can log into them through Telnet or SSH and they will respond uh, from a command line perspective and you'll be able to manage the device that way. In all these cases you can upgrade the firmware simply by going to the packages menu and then clicking on check for updates and the updates will download and install automatically. The device will reboot and you will be back online very quickly. If there ever is a case where the device gets interrupted during the update, somehow it stops working, this type of thing, and you'll end up bricking the device, then you can press this uh, reset button and do a couple of things. There's a special tool on the Microtik website which allows you to do a net boot into this for this device and load the firmware. So they've really thought long and hard about making sure that these devices don't fail. And if they do fail, they can be recovered. They have a thing called safe mode. If you're doing something from remote that may end up disconnecting you, if you're working on a VPN settings through that VPN or something like that, you can click the button called safe mode. And if you get disconnected during that configuration change, the system will automatically reboot, store the, uh, any changes that you have made back to what they were previously, and then come back online. Again, it'll try and save you from yourself or save you from misconfiguration. So that's it. If I haven't convinced you to buy Microtik devices, well then that's fine. But certainly uh, have a look at their range. It's, it's a huge range that they have. Bye.